a I want to really quickly cover an algorithm uh, that I don't know if it exists. I don't think it exists to resolve a convex collision in 3D in a specific direction, which is very important for a variety of reasons. But I'm gonna I'm gonna barely explain the algorithm because I don't want to make this video, um, and and I'm gonna just really quickly show how it works. And this is building off my last GJK video. If you watch that, it'll make more sense how this works. This is kind of, this is an algorithm that just builds off of the properties of Minkowski sums and Minkowski differences. Um, I just pulled this out of my ass, so I don't know if it works or not. I mean, it, it definitely works. I'm using it right now, but uh, it just kind of makes sense. And so I'll explain it. And you can see as I'm walking around here, I'm not getting into little jagged clips with the ground. Um, that is because of this algorithm. So I'm going to show the algorithm, <clears throat> not this. I call it a GJK direction. I did not finish writing my description. So basically, I'll show this happening in 3D. This how I'm going to, this is going to be like less than a 10 minute video, hopefully. What's happening, you can see down here, these two things down here are my two bodies that I want to collide, right? Uh, and let me restart this. I need to set debugging to true. These two bodies down here are what I want to collide. And that fucked everything up. Okay. There we go. And so you, you can see this up above them is the resolution of the collision. So I'm going to select one and move it. And this is the Minkowski difference. You can watch my other video for an explanation. And what happens is I'm going to step through this algorithm. Uh, I'm going to explain it first. It chooses a random point that tries to not be near the direction. I'm trying to resolve this in the positive x direction. You can see this line here. It's going to choose a random point in the Minkowski difference. And then it's going to choose another random point on the opposite side of the Minkowski difference. And it's going to iteratively move a triangle and a line. It moves back and forth between a triangle and a line. It's trying to encompass the ray that is created from the origin in the direction you want to move. So you can see here, it started off with this line. Let me slow down. This is a direction it's trying to move in, or the opposite of the direction, I think. <clears throat> so it created this triangle. It's trying, and I'm trying to move, uh, what is this, like positive x or something? So it has to encompass the, the origin, positive x, which it is not yet. So now it moves to that line. Now it moves to this triangle. That is encompassing it. So now that it's, now that it's encompassing it, the origin in positive x, that ray, it starts the next step of the algorithm, which is iteratively, uh, I guess, basically converting this back and forth between a triangle and a tetrahedron in order to scoot closer and closer to the maximum possible point in this direction. And once it gets to the maximum possible point in this direction, the algorithm stops and you can calculate the overlap vector in that specific direction. So you can see here, it's resolving. This is the normal resolving in that direction. And there it is. This is the tetrahedron. And now it's going to choose the triangle on this tetrahedron that also encompasses this ray, which is this one. So now it's this and tetrahedron again. And now it's going to be this triangle and then tetrahedron again. Uh, and then now it's going to be, I don't know, some triangle, that one. And it looks like it's done. So one more time, it's done. That, that little thing is the resolution vector. And so now you can see, I'm going to add a bunch of steps. As I drag this around, you can see up top there, I have a depth testing off, but you can see up top here, it always, no matter what I'm doing on the bottom, it always resolves in the positive x direction. So that's how this works. And I'll show the code. Yeah, very nice. And it also works, I can delete this. It works with any convex shapes. So let me drag this over here. You can see it is resolving this cube in the correct direction. And if I swap the objects, it'll do resolve the other one in the correct direction. So what's happening, almost going to be done with the video. It starts off with a search direction that is in the direction you want to go in. Uh, 
I actually invert the, dire the direction you're trying to go in at the start just to make things more simple because you actually have to resolve the Minkowski difference in the opposite direction and find that enclosing vector and then apply it uh, as a negative. But anyways, so I, I invert the direction. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm finding the search direction that is basically orthogonal to uh, the ray that you're trying to move in. And then I start at that point. That was the first point you saw. Then I get another point that is basically the cross product between the ray, the direction of like the origin essentially, and that point you just found. It's a cross product there. You go in that direction, you get your second point. And for each of these, I average it with the direction you're trying to move in because that pushes it closer to the correct resolution triangle. So this just reduces the iteration count I found. Um, so then you start building your simplex. You get the first support point in that search direction. You do that thing, you get the cross product like I talked about. You get the new uh, support point in that search direction. And so uh, this is the loop. This is the loop that tries to iteratively scoot the triangle. Let me see if I have this scene set up. Microsoft Paint scene. No. Hang on. Paint. OK, good enough. OK, so I hope I added that to the right place. What is happening is you have your Minkowski cloud or whatever, like your points and all that stuff. And say this is the point of the ray that you're trying to get to. And this is your triangle. It's going to basically uh, delete this. It's going to say which line is most in the direction of that point, this point projected onto the triangle plane. And it's this one. So it deletes these and then continues. It finds some new point over in that direction, which will be like this. And then it repeats. Uh, now the point most in that direction, pretend I deleted this, is here. So now it encloses your projected point in your triangle. And that's the code that's happening here. So I only have two cases. I start off with my line. I only have two cases, the line and a triangle. Um, some of the things are not quite resolved yet, but I just want to make this video and get it out and get it done with because I th there is not a single solution I could find of this online, so I had to make it myself. Uh, so basically, this is probably all very unoptimized and wrong, but you're getting your line and you're effectively getting a vector uh, from your line towards the ray. So what you're doing here is you project the ray, the direction you're trying to go in, onto the plane made, uh, onto the plane made at your line using the normal of the origin to the line. So your line is acting as the, I don't know, you're, basically your line is acting as a plane and the normal of the plane is the direction of the origin to your line. That's all there is. You project the ray onto that and get the point, and then you check which side of the line uh, the point is on. And from that, you continue expanding your triangle. This is code to help with like epsilon issues. And basically what this is doing is when the point is too close to the line, it has trouble. So I have some special cases for that. Uh, you can figure that out if you want. I'm not really explaining this because this algorithm does not exist. So. At this point, you have the direction you want to go in. The direction is basically I get my projected point on my line plane, and then I get the direction of that, and that is my direction. I cross product the projected point normal with my AB line, and there is my search direction. Um, I get the new support point in that search direction, and then now I have a triangle. And basically, this, this is probably unnecessary if I actually optimize my algorithm but I'm checking if the normal of the triangle is in the correct direction of the ray. If it's not, I swap A and B. So that's the line case. For the triangle case, uh, it's basically just checking 
it's kind of doing the same thing. It's checking if you're outside of, let me draw one more thing. For, for the triangle case here, it's checking if you're outside uh, A, B, or C. So that's all this cross product is. I have a normal or whatever of my triangle, and I'm checking if it's outside here. I just immediately pass it, because you don't have to worry about if it's outside both. It'll resolve no matter what. If it's outside B, I immediately turn my triangle into this line and resolve. If it's outside BC, I immediately turn my triangle into this line and resolve. And likewise, if it's outside CA, I immediately turn my triangle into CA and resolve. So that's the triangle case. So the triangle ends up as a line. And the thing is, if it's not inside any of those directions, it's inside the triangle. And then we're done with this part. If it's inside the triangle, uh, effectively, I leave the simplex as a triangle and move on. But throughout all this code, I track the newest triangle that I find in case basically something goes wrong, like an epsilon issue. Let me stop. If there's an epsilon issue, I just stop and return the nearest triangle. <laughs> OK, I'm just going to keep going. Uh, call me, please. OK, so after you find your triangle, this means your ray is now intersecting the triangle. And so you have to iteratively build your tetrahedron out and reduce it back to a triangle. That's what this is doing. So basically, I move my triangle. I get the BCD on my triangle. And then I get the normal of the triangle. And then I find A in the direction of the normal of the triangle. Oh my god. <laughs> I find A in the direction of the normal of the triangle, right? So now that I have this, I have my tetrahedron. So effectively, ignore all the debugging code. What I'm doing at this point, OK, maybe he'll stop. So effectively, A is the new point furthest in the direction of the normal of the triangle. And basically, all I'm checking is if A is essentially on the plane of the triangle, you're done. There is no more triangles further in the direction you want to go in. And if you're in this loop, you know that your ray is always intersecting the triangle or the tetrahedron. So if you reach this point and A lies on the triangle, that means you have found the triangle closest in the direction you want to go in that the ray intersects, so you're done. You just return, uh, this is an EPA thing. You just basically return uh, the distance or the vector towards that point of your Minkowski sum. And that is your resolution vector. If you're not at this basically exit scenario yet, you need to check which of the three triangles in the tetrahedron the ray is intersecting. So this is the math to do that. Effectively, you have to project the direction ray onto each of the three tetrahedron triangle planes and then check the same boundaries that you did before for this. And so for the tetrahedron case, effectively, you have like this thing, right? You have A. B, C, D. And so you're checking for, for triangle ABC. You're checking if, it, if the projected point is in front of both of these lines. For the triangle ACD, you're checking if the projected point is in front of these lines. And for the triangle ADB, you're checking if the projected point is in front of these lines. Uh, you don't have to check the boundaries because you know the ray is intersecting this triangle because you keep iteratively updating based on the triangle intersection. Um, so that's all you do. Oh, I also have logic here to check if the normal direction of each of the triangle is in the same direction as the directional vector you want to travel in. Because if you get in the scenario where your triangle is like this, uh, how do I draw this? Yeah, like this. So this is A. Uh, and then this is B, C, D. Basically, A got placed outside of the triangle in terms of 2D, because remember, this is a 3D tetrahedron. If A got placed outside, then ABD, or whichever this is, ADB, whatever triangle this is right here, will be facing the wrong way. So you want to ignore that one. 
So that's what this check does. So effectively, I'm checking that it's facing the right way. I'm checking that the projected point on the triangle is within the correct uh, sides of the triangle. And if that's the case, I update my simplex and move on. And I keep looping this until I find that my new projected A point is effectively on my triangle plane, and then I return the direction. I still need to do, I need to do this. Just iteration, I forgot what I called it, max iterations. And uh, if this is not satisfied, do this some really weird epsilon bug or something, I don't want my game to freeze. In this case, I already am keeping track of the furthest direction, as you can see here. I actually don't need to keep track of the furthest triangle or furthest normal, I guess. So in this case, I just return the furthest direction, which is effectively the t variable times the directional vector you want to travel in. And that's all you do. So this is a very fast, not well-explained video because I don't want to explain it. But if anyone needs to resolve a 3D convex collision in a specific direction, this is probably the algorithm for you. It's, it's basically as fast as GJK which is very, very fast. It's faster than EPA, which is how you resolve a 3D collision in the nearest possible vector. Uh, so yeah, hopefully it helps.